The Supermarine Swift Jet Fighter is back in the airfix range. Find out what you get for your money right here on Gary's Stuff. Hi, I'm Gary. Welcome to the channel. Welcome back. If you've been here before today, I'm looking at the Supermarine Swift, a 172nd scale kit of the Cold War fighter, being reintroduced by FX for 2024. If you'd like to support the channel for free, please make sure you subscribe. Do make sure you hit the bell and you'll be notified of all my future content as it is published. And anything you like here, please remember to give it the imperial thumbs up on the like button below because every like counts. If you want to offer more concrete support, please check out my partner programs in the information box below. So let's have a look at what you get in the box of the Supermarine Swift FR Mark V in 172nd scale from Airfix. So here it is, the box. So here we have the FX logo, nice and prominent. The scale, 172nd. The aircraft title, Supermarine Swift FR5. Hidden away very slightly here, A04003 is the product code. You'll notice mm -hmm. the difference between this and the original boxing from 2014 is the original boxing would have had a the red stripe here as well. FX have now got onto this new version where it's just the red stripe at the bottom. The box art depicts the aircraft from 79 Squadron, RAF Gütersloh in Germany, by Adam Tooby, as usual, very nice, shows the aircraft off very well, shows the lines of the aircraft off, also shows the underside, which is why there are two of them, very smart indeed. On this long side, there are warnings um, in many, many languages, uh, it's not for children under 36 months, it's not really supposed to go anywhere near them really. Um, because it has small parts which can be a choking hazard and it does reprise this here on this little warning sign not for anyone near three years or younger it's designed for models that are eight years or older it can be recycled various bits and pieces um, here there's a marking to say these are cartograph decals which most of them are these days and very good they are too and over here there's a small reminder saying that the design and tooling of the model is from 2014. The decal schemes in the pack is also from 2014. So this is the original scheme options available. Nothing new in there. On the other long side here, we have, again, the logo. 172nd Supermarine Swift FR5. A04003 product code series 4 kit. Here it says the length will be 180 millimeters when complete. It will have 138 millimeter span and there are 62 pieces included in the kit. There are the two scheme options included. The first is the box art one, which is uh, number 79 Squadron RF Germany, Gutesloh in 1956, and also in Gutesloh from Jever this time, number two Squadron. Um, RF Germany and then we have the paint call outs here the only difference in the paints between the two schemes is the first one the FR5 from 79 squadron has Humble 230 listed this is the PRU blue underneath here we have a token for one flying hour now these tokens if you're a member of the AFX club you can collect these towards a free kit in the future if you're not a member of the club or indeed you are a member of the club and you don't collect your flying hours tokens please do consider cutting them out and sending them to models for heroes who can turn them into kits to help members of the armed forces and emergency services recover from stress and uh, mental health issues caused by their service to our country a brilliant charity links to that charity are in the information box below there's also a reminder you can join the ethics club this kit has a skill level of two so it'd be kind of useful if you have made something else in the past but it's not going to be insurmountable if this is your first kit if it is your first kit just take it easy step by step and you'll be fine okay Let's have a look at what we get inside the box for our money. Box lid lifts straight off, like so. And then we have the contents. As usual, there's a big plastic bag, polythene bag with all the frames, and there's a separate polythene bag inside with the transparent parts. There is the instruction sheet here. And of course, nestled among the instructions 
is the decal sheet which we will have a look at in more detail in a minute. Frame A has the port side of the fuselage, the tail planes, um, nose wheel and main wheels and a few other bits and pieces. Frame B has the starboard side of the aircraft, the nose wheel bay, these are the sides of the cockpit and wheel covers if you want the end carriage up, part of the ejection seats. Frame C has the underside of the wing sections, a couple of bits of the interior as well, gear doors, main gear legs, exhaust pipe and the um, ailerons for the edge of the wings. And then finally frame D, we have the upper surfaces of the wings, we have the rudder, part of the cockpit area, the flaps which can be shown deployed instantly, air intakes for the engines and bits of the ejection seat as well. Frame E is the first of the two transparent frames, slightly odd that they do two of them but none, there we go. Frame E has the main canopy and two of the camera windows for the nose and then there's frame F, another transparent part which has uh, the windshield. This is an insert that goes inside the windshield. Don't know if it's a aiming thing or something, a, a gun sight. And the forward looking camera for the nose, should you want it. I really don't know why these are on two frames. Given that, I don't think there was ever an intention to do anything other than the basic Swift, I mean, it's an FR5. Um, you could convert it to a Mark 1 or a Mark 2 or whatever, I'm sure. But anyway, those are the two transparent frames. And if we have a look at the plastic itself, it's actually pretty nicely molded. It is the new sort of dark grey, sort of greyish brownish plastic that they use these days. Um, and it seems to have taken to these older molds very nicely. Everything looks sharp enough. The detail is, is actually quite nice. It's not overly deep, the panel lines. Obviously, they're out of scale, but then they are on a 172nd scale aircraft, generally speaking. Um, yeah, everything looks nice and sharp. There's not really much in the way of flash at all anywhere. Um, one thing I have noticed is a lot of parts of broken off frames and, and feed lines, which is fine unless, of course, it, it means that you're getting a, a notch into the say this leading edge um, because it's broken in the bag. But other than that, the mouldings are very nice, very clean, and yeah, all look very good to me. The plastic for the fuselage itself is all very nice. It's tiny bits now and again of little bits of um, flash showing up, but really nothing major. This isn't like it's an overused mould. Um, I don't know if it was an overly successful kit. I have no idea, but they are re-releasing it. So I guess they're um, into making the money from another set of people buying it. Uh, inside, pretty much standard sort of airfix fare, really. All very clean. The ejector pins are sunken, so they shouldn't be too much of an issue. You may have to just, this one's on the tail fin area. Might just have to double check that they've been sanded down properly but very light sanding should do that generally fine the interior of the nose nose gear bay is all very very nicely molded lots of detail there um for something that i probably will never see again but hey ho um i think this is part of the interior yeah that's a throttle lever i suppose that's supposed to be a throttle lever there and some stuff on the other side again, yeah, that would be fine. Nothing major, nothing too terrible, nothing too exciting, but very clean. The decal sheet here has the common decals and stencils. We're beginning to see quite a lot more stencils now at this time in British aviation, mid 50s. A lot more stencils to open here, don't touch this, that sort of thing. But they're becoming more and more prevalent. Um, national markings, obviously as well and then we have the set of decals here specifically for the aircraft from 79 squadron with its uh, squadron flashes here and on 
the base here we've got the number two squadron aircraft with its own flashes there as well what i do like is that the uh, the markings from under the wings the uh, the serial number they're pre-cut to match the shape of the undercarriage bays if they're open or closed or whatever you're doing um, and they seem very very close to the carrier film seems to be going right up to the edge so you're not going to have carrier film overlapping but I'll, I'll get a closer look and I'll show you what I mean and here's the decal sheet printed by cartograph as usual and very very sharply printed Let's see if we can pick up here, for example, this is our half millimeter wide pencil lead. And you can see this, this very, very clearly here. All of these, these things are like a third of a millimeter, if that in size, really easy to read. Very, very good, very crisp, very clean. Um, let's have a, look a bit further up here so you get some registration in the colors. Yep, looks okay to me. That's pretty good. Um, yellow is a terrible colour to have to print. It's it's really not doesn't have that sort of ping, that sort of crispness that you normally get, to say, with white going onto a darker background. But these look very good, I must say. Certainly, the registration of them is very good. The colours of the National Roundels absolutely spot on for mid fifties. Post-war, absolutely lovely. And then here you can see the, what I mean by the decals being pre-cut to the size um, required for the undercarriage. But look, even here, the, the K, that tiny little bit of the K there that fits into here. They've taken care of that, which I think is a lovely level of detail. If I can get it slightly more... You can see, I'm uh, hoping you can see there the sort of the sheen on the that's uh, a bit better. You can see that where the the um, edge of the decal comes here. I think you can just about see that the difficult to get just right angle. You can see with the, the the line of the carrier film, the stuff that it actually sits on. Here you can see it goes right across there and doesn't sort of spread out over here which means you don't have to sort of fold the carrier film around the edge of a decal of a of a say the undercarriage but see again this tiny tiny little bit of black here it's this tiny little bit that's missing there because of the position of the undercarriage bay very nice attention to detail whether or not you notice it on a 172nd kit is a, another question however the detail is there they've paid attention to it and that's what i like on to the instruction sheets very very modern airfix standard way of doing things 172nd super sprint fr5 up here quick recount of the um, product code span and fuselage length um, in fact it's got two decal schemes in there and two options the history of the aircraft here in english some basic specifications and these are repeated in French, German, Spanish and Swedish as normal. Inside we have some basic assembly instructions here but in repeated in many many other languages and then the icons are explained what they all mean here a little translation of what they all mean which is fantastic and then the instructions themselves absolutely standard this is how you know we're so used to airfix doing instructions um nice sort of three view with shading get a nice feel for the parts again color call outs just by number so if you i normally just go through the whole thing and start adding what these code numbers are. i mean 85 is like coal black or whatever and 56 i think is aluminium 33 is gloss black or matte black i can't remember which even there you see this the sides one type of black and the, the top's another type of black i can't remember what they are which way around it goes i think 85 is the matte cold black but it's worth just going through and just maybe putting on the actual names of these when you're doing it um but yeah usual thing fuselage goes together uh what cockpit goes together then the jet pipes 
uh, inlets. They go into the sides of the fuselage. Um, you have an option of whether to put uh, plain uh, panels in here or the windows for the cameras. So essentially you've got a choice of a regular Swift or a photoconstant Swift again. Here the same thing, got a camera for the nose or a, a sort of plain bunt for the nose that sort of fills it in. Oh, fairly straightforward. Interesting, it needs two grams of weight in here, just two grams. You kind of think, well, maybe if you'd have made some of this stuff a bit thicker and bigger, you wouldn't need any weight at all. But there we go. Um, if you want to, there's a, a like a fuel extra fuel tank that can be fitted underneath here. Um, if you're going to have use these stands that are sold separately, you need to drill a couple of two millimeter holes in here. If you're going to put the fuel tank on, you need to drill the holes into the fuel tank itself instead. Other than that, everything's pretty straightforward. The two schemes are provided for in the kit. The first is this one, flown by flight attendant Nigel Walpole in 79 Squadron, Gütersloh in Germany, 1956. This is the one with the photo reconnaissance blue, PRU blue on the base. And the other one is an aircraft of number two squadron, RF Germany at Yeva in 1956 as well. And this one has a, a sort of silvery or aluminium underside uh, instead of the PRU blue. And then there's also the sheet showing where all of the common stencil data goes. As I say, this is 1950s. So we're starting to see more and more stenciling on aircraft telling you what to open, what not to open, what to leave alone. Um, and they apply to both aircraft. Obviously, things like the ejection seat triangles are very, very important. Some of this other stuff, I don't know. You take your own position on whether you put them on, um, whether you can see them with the paint you're using, and so on and so forth. But they are all provided if you want them. There it is. Not bad at all. And I'm looking forward to building this. If you'd like the video, please remember, give it the old imperial thumbs up on the like button below because every like counts. And of course, if you haven't done so yet, please subscribe to the channel. Make sure you hit that bell and you'll be notified of all my future content as it is published. Thanks so very much for joining me today. Hope to see you again soon on the channel. Take good care now and goodbye.